So first we want to speak something about the glories of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Of course he is uh, the spiritual grandfather of the disciples of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He was the founder of the Gaudiya Math mission. And Srila Prabhupada took initiation, our own Srila Prabhupada took initiation from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. So we can understand he must be a very, very great personality. Actually, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was born in a very uh, pious, very religious family. His own seminal father, who was a very great Vaishnava preacher, named, and who is in our line of the Siplic succession, and known as Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur was the pioneer of Krishna consciousness in the Western world, and he also pioneered a lot in India. It was very difficult for him to try to establish the position of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he prayed that he could have children who would help him to establish Lord Chaitanya's mission. 
And he had eleven children. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would was the fourth. He was the fourth son of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And he was born into that uh, born into such a nice family atmosphere that his father at the time of his birth, his father was the magistrate in the Jagannath Puri temple and he, he was overseeing all the affairs of the temple. And we can see the birthplace of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. The birthplace is there on the main road as you come from the Jagannath Puri temple, as you go towards the Gundicha temple on the main road. You can see there's a Gaudiyamat temple there now. It was at that place where Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur so Srila Prabhupada taught us that the birthplace of the spiritual master is important and we have now we've purchased also the birthplace of our own Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada in Calcutta. Next time you go to Calcutta, try to go there and see the birthplace of Srila Prabhupada. And try to see also the, the place which is also established at Uttadanga, Uttadanga Junction Road. Because it was there that Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati first met with Bhakti Vedanta Swami. And it was 100 years ago this year that they met, and it was 100 years ago when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati gave the instruction to our Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada that he should preach Krishna, the message of Lord Chaitanya. So tomorrow there's a big program there in Calcutta at number one Uttadanga Road. And many senior devotees have come to attend the program. I think that's why Indra Jumna Swami is leaving today. He'll be going to Calcutta for the program. Because it's a very historic program. Exactly 100 years ago this year. The he got the order. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was known as Bimal, Bimal Prasad at his birth. And at the time of his birth, it's described that when he was, came from the womb of the mother, the umbilical cord from the mother was wrapped around his neck like a brahmana thread. And so that was an auspicious sign that this child is a very good, good potential to help to spread the message of Lord Chaitanya. Nowadays, if, if the child comes out with the cord around his neck like that, we'll think, oh, quick, cut this, oh, you'll strangle him. You know, they don't appreciate that this is auspicious. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was uh, 
when he was just six months old, the chariot came past their home because it's right there on the main road on the way from the temple to the Gundicha temple and the chariots came by and at one point the chariot of Jagannath stopped uh, just at the, at outside their home. So the mother came out and brought the child and brought the child onto the chariot and placed the child at the feet of Jagannath. And when the child was at the feet of Lord Jagannath, at that time a garland fell off Lord Jagannath onto the child. So it was another auspicious omen that this is a very special child. And when he was a few years old, his father had brought some mangoes home for offering to the deity. But Bhimo Prasad is a young boy and he saw the mangoes. And he likes mangoes, so he began to eat the mangoes. Do you like mangoes? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and so Bhakti said, the little boy began to eat the mangoes. And when father came home, he saw the child was eating the mangoes. He told the child, he said, oh, oh, they have not been offered yet. You have to wait till they're offered before you eat them. And so from that time on, although he was just a young child, he would never eat mangoes. He would say, no, I cannot take, I am an offender. And throughout his life, he didn't eat mangoes. Whenever people would bring mangoes, he would say, I cannot take, I'm an offender. So this is an example of his uh, control of the senses and his determination. And as a young man, he was a student at college, and he formed a society with other young men, and he had them all take vows of celibacy. And, but in course of time, every other man in that group, every other man, they all got married, except for he was the only one he maintained throughout his life, the vow of Brahmacharya. And so as a young man, he never bothered much about studies, but he was always good in everything. The, the college, the different places where you study, they give work to do. He would never read it, he would never do it. But he could always do it, whatever was required. And he went on to become a very brilliant astrologer. He was known as a walking encyclopedia. He could talk on any subject. At, at the age of 31, he took a vow to chant the holy name one billion times. And in order to fulfill that vow, he had to chant every day 192 rounds. And it would take him nine years to complete the vow. And he completed the vow. 
So every and he was just living. He was living here in Mayapur. He was living at the yoga peak there, and there was a straw hut, a grass roof hut. He was living. But because he had to chant 192 rounds every day, he didn't have time to take care of the build of the house. And sometimes the, the, the roof would leak because it's a grass roof. And so you have to constantly put new straw, new grass in there to protect the roof, to cover the roof. But he didn't do it because he is so busy chanting every day. So when it would rain, he would just sit under and sit with an umbrella over his head. <laughs> and in this way he would finish his chanting. So he was always the secretary and the assistant to his own father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who was a great preacher. Srila really, Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote many books and many Vaishnava songs, and it was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati who was his secretary, who was his assistant. And whenever Bhaktivinoda Thakur would go traveling, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would go with him. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was always preaching what is the real mood of a Vaishnava and who is a Vaishnava. So it created some controversy. There was opposition to the preaching of Bhaktivinoda. Not everybody was going to accept everything Bhaktivinoda Thakur said. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching that anybody, doesn't matter what their birth is, that anybody can become a Vaishnava. But there were people, there were people called the caste Goswamis who say that, no, you have to be born a Brahmana. You, they, they said that birth is very important. If you're not born a Brahmana, you cannot just simply become equal to a Brahmana. And they said if you're not born in the Brahmana family, then you cannot do the same duties of a Brahmana. <coughs> Duties of the Brahmana are to do things like worship the deity and worship Shaligram Shila and perform the fire sacrifice. <coughs> and you cannot become an Acharya, even if you are an Uttama Adhikari. You cannot become the Acharya. So it was very controversial because the caste Brahmanas, those people who were born Brahmanas in Brahmana families, they were very attached to their position. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was preaching, no, anybody can become Brahmana. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching according to the teachings of Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami was a direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sanatana Goswami 
So at one point, there was to be a big meeting to discuss who is a Brahmana and what, who is a Vaishnava and what's their position. But at that time, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was sick, he had rheumatism and he was bedridden, he couldn't go. So, at that time, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he heard, and he then wrote, he wrote an article, and he wrote the article establishing the position of Vaishnavism and what is actually the position of Brahmana and who's a Brahmana and who's a Vaishnava, and he read everything out to Bhakti Vinod Thakur. I mean, Bhakti Vinod Thakur heard it. He said, "Oh yes, he said, this is wonderful, very, very good." Then you are really Saraswati. You have the blessings. Saraswati. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati went to that conference and he debated with all the smarter Brahmins, all these people who were born caste Brahmins, Brahmins by birth. He debated with them. And he established with evidence from all the scriptures that anybody has the right to become a worshipper of Shaligram. Doesn't matter where you're born. And he also explained to these Brahmanas that actually Kali Yuga, everybody is by birth, Sudra or Lord. And so Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati established the position, what it means to be Brahmana, that it's not just simply birth, but it's by the work and the activities. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, Chatur Vanam Mahashistam Guna Karma Vigbhagasha. So according to Guna and Karma, Guna means qualities and karma means work. So if someone's a brahmana, they have to have the qualities of the brahmana and have to work like a brahmana. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati totally defeated all the arguments of these smarter brahmanas. And he gave the right to everyone that they can worship the Shaligram Shila and they can become a Brahmana and wear the Brahman thread. Some people think that the Brahmana thread is just it's a symbol that, oh, they're, they're proud to wear the Brahmana thread. So, but actually the Brahmana thread is a sign that you've received the mercy of a spiritual master. There are some people, they think, no, I don't need Brahman initiation. I don't want to take Brahman initiation. It's not important. I'm just chanting. I'm just chanting the holy name. That means they don't have faith in the process of initiation. They're not following the initiation process which is given by the Acharyas. The Gayatri Mantra is given for people to purify themselves further. It's a meditation on the Supreme Lord. So, 
There are also people, they think that the holy name shouldn't be chanted aloud. In the times of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, there was one Babaji, and he was preaching to people that we shouldn't chant the holy name of the Lord. We shouldn't chant it aloud, we should just chant softly and in the mind. And he made up a mantra, he made up his own mantra, and he told everybody, chant this mantra. And the mantra was actually full, it was, it was, it was offensive, it was rasta bas, it was against the, 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 the teachings of all rasa. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, they pointed out the mistakes to this Babaji, but he wouldn't listen. So he ended up going mad. He committed an offense. He was telling people, don't chant the holy name out loud. But Rupa Goswami has already described that Lord Chaitanya chanted the holy name aloud. And Lord Chaitanya, he had directly associated with Lord Chaitanya. Rupa Goswami was a direct associate, a direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya. He'd seen Lord Chaitanya chanting the holy name. He'd heard the holy name from Lord Chaitanya. So it's, it is authorized in the scriptures that we should chant the holy name loudly. And we see that uh, people like Haridash Thakur and Kolaveka Sridhar, they all chanted the holy name loudly. And so, uh, Raghunath Goswami is also written in his Manasiksha that we should chant the holy name aloud. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was preaching against these deviations from the teaching of the Shastra. Is, is this man looking for something? So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was had to preach against all these different deviations. He had to establish what is actually the process of devotional service. And there was also objection that he was that he was giving initiation. And, and he would give the sacred bread to people who were not born in higher caste family. Usually the, in the, the smarter tradition that the sacred bread is only given to people in the Brahmin, Kshatri and Vaishya caste. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was giving sacred thread, he was putting the Brahmin thread on people who were even from lower families, from Sudra family and lower family, lower caste. So this has always been controversy in the past, even in the time 
After Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was controversy over this. There were acharyas like Naratam Das Thakur. Naratam Das Thakur, he was not born in a Brahmana family. But he gave initiation to some Brahmanas. There were two in particular, two famous Brahmanas, uh, Ganga Narayan Chakravarti and Ramakrishna, ba Ramakrishna Bhattacharya. They both got initiation from Naratam Das and then also Shamananda Pandit, he was not a Brahmana, but he was give, he gave initiation to Rasikananda, who was from a Brahmana family. So there were objections even at that, those times. That was just after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had appeared. People were saying, oh, they're not qualified, they're not Brahmanas. How can they give Brahman initiation to these other people? He Mm -hmm. So there were there were obstacles, just like Srila Prabhupada also got objections when Prabhupada was giving initiation to people, the people from Western countries, from countries outside India, then was considered even more objectionable. But according to scriptures, it's allowed. That anybody can become a Brahmana if they're properly initiated and trained by a bona fide spiritual. And what is the qualification of the bona fide spiritual master? That was taught to us from the mouth of Ramananda Rai when he was talking with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ramananda Rai, oh no, actually it was from the mouth of Lord Chaitanya. Because Ramananda Rai was surprised because Lord Chaitanya was questioning him. He was asking him so many questions. And Ramananda Rai thought, you know, you're the Brahmana, you're the sannyasi, I should be questioning you. But Lord Chaitanya said, no. He said, Kiba Vipra Kiba Nasi Sudra Keni Nai Ye Krishna Tadva Vetsi Guru Hoy. That anybody who knows the science of Krishna, it doesn't matter where they're born, they may be a Brahmana, they may be a renunciate, they may be a whatever position they're in, they may be Sudra, it doesn't matter. But if they know the science of Krishna, then they can be the spiritual master. <laughs> So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was preaching and he was there were many objections to his preaching because he was he was challenging people that you shouldn't be doing this, that this is wrong, you're doing things wrong. He didn't like to see people put the deity and just sit there and have people come and give money. They put the deity just to collect money like a business. He did not like that. And he didn't like people, he didn't like people preaching, giving classes just to get money. He wanted pure devotional service. 
The, the preaching of Krishna consciousness is not a business. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta pointed out the defects in all of these different processes. Of course, he was preaching against impersonalism and voidism, Mayabadi philosophy. And I was telling you about this one, Babaji, that he was such a rascal. He did a thing. He had he had one man dress up like a gopi. And he said, now you're Lolita Saki. So one minute he was a conditioned soul, and next minute he's become Lolita Saki. Now Lolita Saki is the expansion of Srimati Radharani. So how is it possible any conditioned soul can ever become the internal potency of Srimati Radharani? So this was another deviation, another offense in the preaching of Krishna consciousness. This, this foolish man, he thought that uh, it's only in Krishna Lila that one can experience ecstatic love for Krishna. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he pointed out that in the past times of Lord Chaitanya, there is also ecstatic love for Krishna. So you want, we want to follow the example of the Goswamis and how they behave. They didn't take the dress of gopis. <coughs> But they were in the mood of the gopis, they were following in the footsteps of the gopis. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was also following in the footsteps of the gopis, of the Manjaris in particular. And he preached this Krishna consciousness movement very vigorously, very boldly. He wasn't afraid. Even though there was plan to have him killed at one point, he was not afraid. Because he was a threat to all of these caste conscious people, how they wanted to cheat the people with their bogus teachings. So at one point these people had collected a sum of money, a lot of money, and they were ready to give it. They told the policeman, we will give you this money, but we're going to do something to this Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. But you should not interfere. You should just let us do it. But the policeman, the head of the police who was offered the bribe, he told him, he said, no, no, I, I cannot take money in this condition. He said, I cannot allow you to harm a holy person, a saintly person. The policeman said, yeah, he said, usually we do take bribes. Usually we do. We, you know, we, we are, we're in the material world. We have to maintain our lives. So usually people give a bribe, we will take it. But in this case, you want me to take a bribe and I'll let you, let you go and, and do harm to a holy man, a saintly man? That I cannot. So 
Don Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati faced a lot of opposition. One time they were on Parikrama here in Navadweep and they came to the Ghat. And there was a big crowd, a huge big procession and there, there was elephant even in the procession and there was a big crowd of devotees and they were all coming to go on the boat to cross on the ferry and there was a bank, gang of people there, they stoned them, they threw stones at them. So the, the devotees tolerated all of these kind of treatment to establish the Krishna consciousness movement. And then when they went to Vrindavan to do Brajamandal Parikrama, then when they came into Vrindavan, the shopkeepers, they closed their shops. They didn't want to sell anything to the devotees. Because all the shopkeepers, they were all Brahmins, they were all caste Brahmins. So they didn't like that Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was giving the Brahmin thread to people who were not actually Brahmins by birth. So they didn't want to even sell anything to the devotees. So these were some of the difficulties. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati pushed on, he fought to establish this Krishna consciousness movement. He had to face, of course, the opposition from the, the two groups. There were the Sahajas, those who take everything very cheap. They think anybody can become a gopi, like they want to dress up in their, in their material, although their condition so, they want to take, take the position of a gopi. And then there are also the Kasko Swamis. They're thinking the birthright. Everything is based on birth. If you don't have the birth, then you have no right. <laughs> Just like there is also the Nityananda Vamsas. And they claim that they are the Acharyas of the Sampradaya because they are the they claim descendancy from Lord Nityananda. Actually, Lord Nityananda, of course, he had two wives and he had two children. There was one boy, one girl. One girl, Ganga Devi. And the boy was Virabhadra. But Virabhadra never married. So there was no descendant from him. So who are the direct descendants from Lord Nityananda? These, these people, they were just maybe they were disciples, maybe their disciples are from the village where Lord Nityananda lived. They were not actually actual descendants. But even if they are, they still, if they want to be Acharya, they have to do the work of the Acharya. They have to go and preach. We are not opposing them. If they want to go and preach, let them go and do it. 
But can it just sit and say, we are the Acharyas, we are from the line of Lord Nityananda, so we are the Acharyas? They have to establish themselves as Acharyas by their preaching. And similarly, from the line of Advaita Acharya, Advaita Acharya had six sons. Now three of the sons, they were Asara, they were, they were deviants, they became Mayavadi. And from the other three sons, the best one was Achutananda. And but Achutananda never married. He was a brahmachari. So there was no real descendants from Advaita Acharya. So that's the arrangement of the Lord. He doesn't leave his descendants because he doesn't want them to become, you know, they just become proud. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta fought vigorously to establish this Krishna consciousness movement. And he was very very strict with his devotees, with his disciples. He liked them to go out and preach and distribute books. And he was printing a daily newspaper. And if somebody could even sell one newspaper and collect a few paisa, he would be very happy and praise them, you have done very well. And if somebody went out for preaching and they just came back with a big amount of money, he would say, oh, this is not very good. You must have just went to rich people. That's not good. You should go to everyone. And so if somebody came back, they had some money, and somebody else came, and they brought some vegetables, and somebody else gave some rice, and somebody else gave some tomato, like that. They said, oh, very good, very nice. <laughs> so he was very revolutionary. He did things which sannyasis, which people never did. They, they, he would do things like ride in a car in those days, you know, a hundred years ago, riding in a car and going to see big people, government people. So, usually the sannyasis they would walk barefoot and they would go in the villages, but he would he would wear shoes and he would go and to meet these big people. He'd wear sewn cloth. They're not supposed to wear sewn cloth. He would wear sewn cloth and he would wear shoes and he would go to meet these big people. And he would bring them to Mayapur to see the Holy Ghost. So we have so much to be thankful to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Of course, he gave the instruction to our Srila Prabhupada to preach and to go to the West. So, we're, we're so grateful for their, His mercy. Alright, so today we're going to give initiation. Right, initiation. In, in, in the line of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, connecting devotees into the disciplic succession, initiation is the process by which we become connected to the Guru Parampara.
。我们是把大家连接到苏格巴西西关的这个传承之中，通过启迪的仪式，我们让奉献者跟我们公路跨栏跨大使徒传系连接在一起。Not just to one person, but to the whole line of disciplic succession. 通过启迪呢，不是说让你只跟一个人有关系，而是跟整个的使徒传承有关系。And we are connected to all the Iskon devotees. 而且我们跟所有伊斯坦的奉献者们都息息相关。Particularly the founder Acharya of Iskon, our own Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. 而且尤其是我们伊斯坦的创办人 Acharya Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada。And so initiation is an important part in spiritual life. Accepting a spiritual master and following his instructions. 因此启迪是灵性生活之中重要的一步。我们接受一位灵性导师，并且追随他的训示。It's important for everyone. You should have, just like you have a mother and father. Everybody has a mother and father, right? You can't say I don't have a mother and father. 每一个人来讲都是非常重要的，就像是大家都有自己的父母一样，你不能说我没有父母。But even more and for more and more fortunate is the one who has a spiritual master. 但是更幸运的是一个有灵性导师的人。Because by the mercy of the spiritual master, then you get shelter of Lord Krishna. 因为通过灵性导师的仁慈，你可以得到 Krishna 的庇护。Everybody's got mother and father. 每一个人都有父亲和母亲。Even the birds. The birds which are flying around here, and the dogs, or every living entity, they've all got mothers and fathers. But only the fortunate ones have got a spiritual teacher. And by the mercy of the spiritual teacher, we get the mercy of Krishna. So it's very important. To get shelter of a spiritual master. And so, the Krishna consciousness movement encourages the devotees. And in order to take initiation, you have to also do the disciple course. And you have to chant for.、Uh, for Chant sixteen rounds and follow four principles. 大家还应该唱诵十六圈，追随四项规范原则。So not very difficult. 不是很困难。Especially if you're living here in my apartment. 尤其是如果你住在马普这里的话。This is a very special place, very holy place. 这是一个很特殊的地方，非常神圣的地方。Very wonderful to be here and to follow to chant the holy name here in this place. 在这个地方是非常美妙的一件事情，我们可以在这里唱诵圣名。All right, so、uh, we're going to do we're going to do the fire yaga in a little while. 那么过一会儿之后，我们就会做火祭。All right. So some devotees are going to take part in the yaga. They never took part in the yaga before. 有一些奉献者会参与火祭，因为以前他们没有做过火祭。But first, we have to give beads for one devotee. First, we have to give beads for one devotee. Okay. 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 Ok
So his wife is already initiated. And his son is a wonderful kirtanier. He works very nice harmonium. And nice kirtan. So Prabhu is also taking initiation today. So what are the four principles? Okay. All right. So we give you a name, Jai Goranga Das. Anima. Because this is the holy dam of Mayapur, so you should have a name of Lord Chaitanya. Jai Goranga Prabhu Ki. Jai. So we're going to do the first sacrifice now. Shama Kripa Maharaj is also going to sit in the fire sacrifice. She didn't put the fire yet. yet. <laughs> Chaitanya Charan also going to sit in the fire yoga. And a door party. Yeah. Yeah. Door party. And door party also sit in the fire yoga. You want the drum something? Or maybe you do the yardi on the ice shelter. Okay, so we're going to do the fire <笑>你你高兴你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊你你高兴啊